Do you love painting animals, but you struggle with painting fur? Hello everyone, I'm Elisa of Elisa Laporte Art. Easter is coming up and I thought a great way to show you how to create fur would be to paint this bunny. If you would like to paint this bunny with me, I'll have a downloadable sketch on my blog and I'll leave a link in the description below. To get started, we're going to create a wet on wet wash. So I'm going to wet all of my paper with the exception of the bunnies. Then I'm going to go in with Cad Yellow Light and Sap Green and create my background. It'll be a lot easier to have this background done before than trying to do it afterwards and not getting it into the bunnies at all. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of salt for texture while it's still drying. And then after it's completely dry, I can just rub it off. We're going to start here with our bunny that is white. Because the fur is white, we're going to have some pink and flesh tones and whatever colors are reflecting onto its fur. So we will have some black and some green under its chin and on its chest as well. I'm going to start with pinks around the nose and eyes and in the ears and that's where the fur is the shortest and we'll see more of the flesh. I want to soften and blend them out and I don't want hard edges at this stage. I want it to be light and barely there. So pay attention to where the flesh peeks through with the white fur. The nose and ears will be more pink. Um, just make sure you go in and lighten things up and blend it out. Now I'm going to mix my ultramarine blue and cad red light to make a grayish violet. This will add more life than just adding a gray. If you saw my video when I was reviewing reds, maybe you will remember that we can get a nice violet from these two colors. With this color, I'm going to lean it more towards red so I can add a nice shadow to its ear. I don't want to go straight to gray. Shadows always have a bit of the color of what it's shading. So the ear is pink, so the shadows will have some red tones in it, as well as those blues. You want to soften it up with clean water. Using a smaller brush, I can add some color to its nose and then to our eye. We will darken all of this up later. Now we will add some blue to our gray, darkening it up. And we will add little sections of shadow to our fur using a negative space painting. Like I did in this video, which you can find in the description below. After adding a section, I clean my brush, wipe it on a dry paper towel just once, and then blend out that area. So it just has enough water on it that it will blend it, but it's not going to create a mess everywhere. So it's nice and soft, and there'll be lots of repeating this process. Doing fur is all about painting in the negative, but it's also painting in the positive at the same time. So be careful. You're looking at the light and the shadow side of the fur. This will give your fur a realness without needing to paint every hair or use white paint. I want one side to have a hard edge and one side to have a soft edge. That's why we blend out that one side. It allows the hair to look like it's coming out of the fur and also where the fur is defined on the light side. So it kind of is twofold. We're gonna make more of our gray violet and then we're gonna put down a section of fur that's in the shadow and clean our brush and then blend out one side. As it dries, it will look even lighter. That's okay. We can layer it creating our values. Thank you. 
Do you see how you are starting to see the fur? Because of the grass here and the eggs, you will see some of those colors reflected in its fur on the chest and right under the chin. So I'm going to start with some sap green and put it in the shadow under the chin and the chest area. I want this to be very subtle and very light. Now we'll work on the shadow of this ear. This ear does have grays, so we will continue to layer this up just one color at a time. Some lines will leave just a little darker than others. Now here and on the underside, we are going to have a lot more shadows because it's reflecting the black and the greens and it's the underside of our bunny. So we want to soften things up. Uh, you can always go darker. It's not as easy to lighten it up. I'll add a little bit more blue to vary my colors. See how that fur is starting to pop? Remember, with white fur, it's all about studying the shadows and reflective colors to create the fur. You can see I'm not trying to get every hair in there. I'm just trying to represent hair in tufts or clumps, like you would with human hair. Uh, your mind will fill in the rest. I will go back into the eye while we are waiting for the fur to dry. I like to jump around my paintings. This helps with the drying time, as well as making sure my values are correct and that I don't darken any areas too much or too little. The white of the paper can deceive us because it's so white, we sometimes feel like we've created something a little bit too dark when the opposite is actually true. So by moving around our painting, we can evaluate our values and our painting more accurately. After we darken this eye, you can see how light the fur still is, so we will continue to darken it. I will be doing a lot of repeating the same as the first layer, just adding a little bit more pigment to the wash. So to avoid repeating myself too much, I will turn on some music to play in between different techniques, and I hope you guys enjoy. Story being told inside my head I'm too shy to straighten up my bones and be a man I gotta tear this wall Waiting for the fur on this white bunny to dry, let's move over to the bunny with our black fur. First, we are going to tone the whole bunny down with our gray violet mixture because our highlights will not be white, they will be more of a gray. I gotta tear my
After putting that wash down, we'll let it dry completely while we create a darker, almost black mix. Using the same colors, ultramarine blue and cad red light, this way our black will have some variation of warmth and cool tones. I will have two mixtures, one with more blue and one with a little bit more red, so it's kind of on the purple side. I want them both ready because we're going to be switching back and forth between them as I create my wash. I'll do this all in a single wash. I'm going to start by applying paint to where our shadows are and then I'll use clean water to blend things out where our lights and highlights are. Working lighter to darker, we're going to build up our values and we will create the fur after we've built up our values to the point where we want them. Using this mix will allow you to see some differentiation in its fur coat so you can see what's going on in our bunny. We will also be adding other beautiful colors in there that are reflecting onto the fur because our bunny that's in black is also going to have reflected light from the grass, from the white bunny, from its surrounding colors, anything that's around it. Now this bunny's ear is going to be more red than pink because the backside of the ear is got black fur, but we still want to make sure the ear appears as if it's glowing from that sunlight coming through. So make sure you're using a pure pigment. I'll add some of the reddish tone to its eye for now so we don't lose it, but we need to, to kind of tone it down because it was starting to freak me out. Now we're going to come over here and work on the nose of our little white bunny. And it will be a little bit more reddish in color, just a little bit darker than what we have. And then we'll add some color to the ear as well. I'm adding a touch of Indian yellow to show the sun shining on its ear. And then I will add some of that Indian yellow to the bunny's chest because one of the eggs is going to be yellow. So this ear needs some more gray than our gray violet. So let's go in and darken those up. I'm going to add a little touch of cad yellow light to my gray mix, which as we learned from our skin tone video here, violet and yellow are complements and will create a neutral. So I'm going to leave a link to this video below. I'm defining more of our ear and then we will go in and add another layer to our black bunny. Taking small sections at a time and then blending them out. We want to take things slow so we don't lose our lights and highlights. See how I'm creating a texture that looks like fur? With our black fur, we want to focus on texture and value changes. If you get little white spots or different little spots here, you want to actually keep those because it'll create highlights and add interest to your fur. You still want to make sure you're keeping soft edges as we are still building up our values here. Creating fur in black so you don't lose it can seem scary and frustrating. So remember to look at your values. Where are those lights and darks? I have this video on values if you missed it or if you would like to check it out and I will leave the link in the description below.
Don't be a stranger in the night Take a chance for some romance Don't cover your eyes We're love trees Know you better than anyone else It's time you let your guard down For someone like me Then someone like me that knows what to do and how to take care of you. Most of all that deserves you. The sweetest red sheep I'd ever seen. With this mix we used, it still appears black, but gives me more control and warmth and coolness to my painting. He kind of has some blue in his eye and we want to make sure we capture that uh, as it will help us so we can see the eye. So it's not just black. That he deserves you. I started to use negative painting for my grass, but later I decided to change it because I felt it was too busy and it was drawing attention away from my bunnies. Now for the eggs, I decided to go with um, pastel -y red, yellow, and blues. And don't forget, after you do those eggs, to put those highlights or reflected lights of those colors in both bunnies because they will be reflected in there. Plus, where our blue is the only blue in this whole painting, you really want to make sure that it is in both of those bunnies somewhere because you don't want to single it out as the only spot that has that color or your eye will be drawn whoop, right to that one instead of to our bunnies. So I did add a little bit of that turquoisey blue in the underneath side of the bunny and in the black fur of the bunny as well.
To finish things off, I'm going to go in with white and black pens to create the whiskers on our bunnies. This is the best option since the whiskers are so fine. You could go in with a black or white paint, but your whiskers would look way too large for that. So now we'll sign our name. I'm going to use yellow since it is a little opaque and we want to be able to see it against our green. I hope you had fun painting with me and learned a lot. Did you like painting animals? If so, what animals would you like to paint next? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. It really helps me out and click that bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos. And I'll see you in the next one.